Harrier. Perhaps the world's smallest and most elusive combat aircraft, the Jump Jet Harrier is unique. If there should ever be a war between the Warsaw Pact and NATO, one can take it for granted that all NATO airfields would be wiped off the map within 24 hours, and probably within 24 minutes. NATO would be left with no land-based air power whatsoever, except for a handful of Harriers, which can be dispersed to hide and fight. Many people, ignoring this rather important fact, have poured scorn on the little airplane. Their numbers sharply diminished after the Falklands campaign, when Harrier and Sea Harriers flew fighter and attack missions in weather that would have grounded every other fast jet in the world. It's now almost 30 years since the Harrier's little Hawker predecessor first got daylight under its wheels. Since then, the Harrier family has come a very long way indeed, and the story is still being written. Some 35 years ago, the press called this strange contraption the flying bedstead, and it was generally regarded as a kind of joke. But in fact, the principle of rising vertically from the ground on the thrust of a jet engine meant that eventually high-speed aircraft could be built that could operate without an airfield. In other words, they would survive in a war. By 1955, two short SC-1s were being built in Belfast, each fitted with five RB-108 turbojets. Four were arranged amidships, pointing down to provide lift. The fifth one was in the tail to provide thrust in the normal way. With Chief Test Pilot Tom Brook Smith in the cockpit, the throttles of the four lift jets were opened up. The SC-1 lifted vertically off the ground and could then be controlled in hovering flight by compressed air jets at wingtips, nose and tail. By opening the throttle of the engine in the tail, the SC-1 could be made to accelerate forwards. As speed increased, so did the lift of the wings, until the four lift jets could be shut down. This was called an accelerating transition. At the end of the flight, a decelerating transition had to be made back to engine-supported hovering flight, followed by a vertical landing. It was the age of VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. 